uh, hope you can you can see my screen. So for starters, I think I'm, I'm gonna uh, I think I'll try and see if I can first of all respond to the first two uh, points raised by Mr. Msenge about uh, the need for a URL and also the part where you want to 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 learn more about how to run a journal. Now, in terms of the URL, right? There's a, there's a number of things to think about. So for, for starters, you know that journals are run differently. Um, the UNSA journals that are on the on the, the, the so-called University of Zambia journal platform, and I'll share the URL right now. There are quite a number of them. It turns out that um, uh, these, these uh, I, I guess the deployment of these journals was mostly spearheaded by DRIG. So initially, um, there are only a total of three traditional DRIGS journals that were uploaded onto this platform that, that were set up and configured on this platform. So that would be JABS, uh, JLSS, I happen to be a member of the editorial team for JLSS, um, and then Jonas. Um, and, and for those of you that have been around UNSA long enough, you, you remember that these three journals were actually specifically set up to enable postgraduate students to meet the requirement where you know, one was expected to either publish or submit an article worthy of publishing. So these are meant for postgraduate students, but obviously over the years, things have changed slightly, okay? The, the reason I'm talking about UNSA journals is because um, there's no policy in place, but um, the guidelines in place are that uh, all online UNSA journals, at least most of them as far as I'm concerned, are deployed on the UNSA journal platform. So I think last time I counted, there were a total of about uh, 13, if not 14 journals or something. And the URL um, associated with the journals obviously has the UNSA brand, branding information. So for instance, the JLSS journal uh, would be accessible via this URL. So there's the journals.unza.zm subdomain, followed by you know, an index.php, and then you have the JLSS. Uh, you know, uh, Jonas would, would have the Jonas at the end and so forth, right? So in, in the case of the nursing journal that you're talking about, uh, the option would be to have uh, abbreviations or the short name for the journal, uh, which, which would be appended at the end of the URL. That's the first point. Now, the thing about journals is that, uh, as I earlier mentioned, they run differently. And I'll give you a classic example of uh, two journals that I'm familiar with. There's the Medical Journal of Zambia, all right? The Medical Journal of Zambia is not really a journal that is um, associated with a single institution. Okay, so at least as far as I'm concerned. The, there's the Zambia ICT journal, right? Um, which which ideally is, is operated, it's co-operated by three higher education institutions. So there's the University of Zambia, there's, um, uh, there's Copper Belt University, and there's Mungushi University, well, four actually. Uh, so CBU, Unza, Mungushi, and Zikas University. If you look at the URL, it's slightly different as well. The reason why this is the case is these two journals, Medical Journal of Zambia and Zambia ICT Journal, are not really associated with a single institution. So in the event that the nursing journal you are, you are referring to is not really specifically affiliated with the UNSA, then there will have to be a bit of a rethink in terms of the domain name that you want to use. And I'm mentioning this because I think uh, the chair had mentioned that she's... Uh, She's at, uh, um, I, I, I've forgotten the institution again. Sorry, uh, Doc. Uh, Mulungush. Yes, Mulungush, Mulungush right? So if she's at Mulungush, yeah. then one would assume that uh, this journal is not an UNSA journal. If it is an UNSA journal, then you might as well just set it up on the UNSA journal platform. Um, yeah, so so that's, that's that in terms of the URL. Now, the... There are pros and cons to this. The beauty with uh, with using this journals.unza.zm platform is you do not have to worry about um, paying money for a subdomain because a subdomain comes at a cost. You purchase it, to reserve it, and then there are annual fees that you you uh, you have to pay every year. It's not expensive, right? I have, for instance, a personal domain that I maintain. I've been maintaining it for well over a decade, so it's. Not very expensive, but maybe the issues to do with uh, administration because you'd have to make sure that uh, there's somebody tasked in overseeing that uh, that uh, subscription fees are paid. The other thing to think about is hosting space. So the 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 
the web application itself has to be hosted on a server somewhere. Um, now, again, um, server space, especially shared hosting space, has become increase, increasingly cheap, but it turns out that management becomes a lot easier if you set it up on a platform that is owned by a larger entity. Like in the case of the Unza Journal platform, Unza is responsible for management, which is why Mr. Mwansa is around, and I believe there are other colleagues from CICT. Um, so I am not sure if the nursing journal is, uh, is tied to the UNSA brand, in which case I think the strong recommendation would be that it be set up on the journals.unza.zn platform. And it's a good thing, really, because it, it will help with a number of things. So you'll notice that uh, another, I guess we can call it your sister journal here, which used to be run by the late brand Chuluva, the Journal of Preventive and Rehabilitative Medicine, for instance, is also hosted on the UNSA journal platform. Um, the other advantage of hosting it on the user journal platform is as of, um, is it last year or before last year it was, I think, UNSA actually started, um, well, UNSA started subscribing to a persistent identifier called a DOI. So all the three journals, I'll use GLSS as an example. When, when you are, all the, the three uh, journals are associated with a DOI, which is unique to that journal. So... Um, if I access an article, for instance, there's, um, there's a digital object identifier, right, which is associated with, with each article, this thing here. And I think we should, we should all be familiar with DOIs. Um, I mean, the, the main role of a DOI is, is to ensure that there's, um, um, there's continuity in, in the event that uh, there's name change to the domain. So it's not uncommon for maybe... I'll give an example of uh, things that have happened in South Africa where two universities merged, right? So if, let's say, UNSA and and uh, and CBU were to decide to say, you know what, there's no point in us having two separate universities who merge, the domain will no longer be UNSA.ZM, maybe it will be CBU UNSA.ZM. Once, once that change is effected, all of these things, the articles and the issue URLs that we are pointing to UNSA will become dead links. These are the things we normally see, the error 404. When you're trying to access, download a document, you can't download it because it's no longer there, right? Um, that's part of the reason. A DOI solves that problem because all you do is you change the mapping. So this persistent identifier will always be there. It comes at a cost. Uh, so if you run this as part of UNSA, you won't have to worry about DOIs. I mean, of course, it's, it's not that expensive. Also, if you look at the, the cost, it's, it's, it's manageable, right? It also depends on your publishing model. Um, I am not sure if, uh, sorry, I'm waffling around here, but it's tied to financing, right? Because the journal has to be financed somehow. So there are usually these business models that are, that are, that are employed, right? Um, it could be that uh, you, you charge author, you know, processing charges, APC charges or fees, they're called, where a, a, an author who is submitting an article prior to publishing will have to pay an amount before that article is published. Or you could decide to say you're going to raise funds by charging people that are accessing the journal to pay subscription fees before they access the articles. We see this with uh, you know large publishing houses like Elsevier and Springer, for instance. Um, of course, there's been a strong push, especially journals that are tied to universities, uh, for the adoption of purely open access publishing models. Uh, I think the one that uh, journals like JLSS, Jonas and Jabs have gone for is what they call a diamond open access uh, model where you do not charge fees for accessing the article, you do not charge fees for authors to submit articles. So everything is open. And, 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 and really these journals are able to do this because um, DRIGS uh, has a budget set aside for that. It may not be the case for your journal. Um, I, I don't know how you raise funds, but those are things to think about. Um, you can actually design or set up the journal in such a way that it's locked and only people that have subscribed can actually access the articles or you can design it in such a way that you don't publish an article unless if the author, author pays. But, but of course, there are obvious disadvantages to those things. If you're charging for people to access, then uh, very few people will actually gain access to your articles and fewer citations. Um, if you're charging authors, they may shun you know, submitting an article there because the alternatives out there which will actually publish work for free. Um, classic case is, I think, Medical Journal of Zambia. I don't think they charge um, 
uh, APC fees there. Um, so, so that's that about the URL. Uh, maybe I can pause here. It would be nice if there's a bit of back and forth before maybe we talk about uh, the other point that you raised to do with uh, how to run a journal. But in terms of the URL, and those are some of the things that I think are important to take into account or consider. And I don't know if I'm still online. Maybe I was talking to, my, to myself. Okay, I'm still online. No, you are still online, Dr. Perry. Yes. 